Hey there animators, and welcome again to Animatron Tutorials! In today's tutorial, we will discover the beauty of masking layers. Layer masks are an efficient way to display complex background animations that need to be cropped, hidden, or restricted to certain stage elements. As you can see here, our caveman buddy has found himself inside the world of pop-up windows. And as we all know, they're some of the scariest places on the internet. But let's see if we can show Mr. Caveman exactly why there's no need to be afraid of them, by learning about layer masks. First, let's figure out what a mask actually does. The name mask is a little deceiving, so it's better that we understand the mask is more of a window. Like any window, you can see what's on the other side, or, in layer terms, what's beneath it. We can draw the mask using any vector tool in the tools bar, so I'll start by selecting the brush tool. By drawing a unique shape for our mask layer, we can best see how the mask effectively defines our viewable area. After naming our new mask layer, we can set our mask by right-clicking on the layer and selecting the Mask option from the pop-up window. Having done so, you should notice that the layer just below our new mask layer only becomes visible within the area we've painted. By locating the tab just under the mask layer itself, we can choose to include multiple layers in the masking process. We can also choose to turn the mask on and off with the layer toggle, just left of the layer name, in case we need to make edits later on. So now that we have a basic understanding of what a layer mask is, we can go ahead and use the layers provided to dissect a masked scene element. These scene elements are constructed using a frame, a subject, and a background. The frame will act as our window boundary, the subject will be the main animated feature, and the background will be, well, a background. I'll use one of our pop-up elements for example. Since this element has already been grouped, I can easily isolate the grouped layers by simply unlocking the layer and then double-clicking over the layer's thumbnail image. By isolating the scene element, you'll see that all of our other scene elements have disappeared, leaving us with only the four layers that this element is comprised of. Fortunately, our layers are named appropriately, so we can better understand the purpose of each. Our top layer is the frame, with our mask layer beneath it, which tells me that the frame is not meant to be affected by the mask. The layers that are directly affected by the mask are these, just below it. Our subject layer, named Caveman02, which has a decent amount of animation attached to it, and the background layer. By turning the layer mask toggle off, we now notice how the animated caveman seems to become visible past the frame borders. Our mask is meant to contain all vector shapes, import objects, and animations that we place beneath it. So let's import an animation from the library that we'll use as a more appealing background element. I'll go to my library tab and hover my cursor over the thumbnail labeled Real Fire. By holding left click and dragging my library item to the center of the stage, we can assure our new animation has been added to our layer list. I'll make sure to position and scale my fire to fit within the mask first and then rearrange my layer order to test the effects. Then I can test my mask layer by switching the mask toggle on. On playback, we see that the mask is working as intended, so I'll make sure to lock all of my layers and then use my breadcrumb history to return home and review my changes. I'll speed up the process a bit and apply the same masking technique to the other scene elements. So now that we've added some more flair to the scene, let's see how our caveman buddy deals with his new environment. Well, it appears that fire may be something our caveman shouldn't be playing with just yet. So let's see if we can help them find some cooler animations next time on Animatron Tutorials.